What's up guys, it's the Danger Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, Danger Speaking, and today we're going to be doing an interesting little video for you guys. Um, I have three copies of Lair of Darkness to open up, and we're going to come up with a short little deck list for three copies of this deck for you guys. So, let's crack into this and actually open up a copy of the deck, talk about a few things as we do so, and then we will do the deck profile for you guys. Wow, that is a lot of glue on here. Jeez, you don't realize, but I actually just smacked my finger against the, against my table here very hard. It actually kind of hurt a little bit. Okay, so, as you can see, here is the really cool box artwork. I really like it. They did a pretty good job on the artwork for this. And so here we have the contents of everything. You have your deck, your beginner's guide, your deck mat slash thingy. Not quite sure what to call it anymore. And of course the holder. So let's start off by getting some stuff out of the way and laying out and looking at this mat thing. So we have on this side, you have your combo tutorials, which is pretty cool. Got a deck list. So we have some really interesting things. Uh, it talks about how you can use a layer of darkness to use tokens for tributes, as well as use it for your virus traps. It talks about powerful cards in the deck and different sets you can power up with. Uh, so let's see, power up with packs with Dark Saviors, which isn't out yet. It comes out the 25th of this month. Uh, it's got vampire things, which are basically high level darks. And it also has some standard dark support cards like Plague Spreader and Armageddon Knight. Talks about Flames of Destruction, which is out now. So it's talking about Iron Dragon Tematon, which is interesting. I don't have any of that yet. And Infinite Imperience, or Impermanence, which is actually Infinite Transience. Network Trap Hole. So both of those can be pulled with Lilith, that's pretty cool. Uh, Extreme Force, talking about Call of the Archfiends, Hey True Nade and Downbeat. And then with Circuit Break, talking about Alkeshic Magician, Evenly Matched, and Metaverse, which are also searchable by Lilith. Then you have the really, really cool mat, guys. Here, I'll show you this end of it, because the camera is just a little too low today for that. This is a really interesting mat. I cannot wait to do some playtesting duels with these decks for you guys. Now just let's get this foldedly unfolded so that it'll actually stick in place and lie flat for us. And voila, now it's flat. So it also comes with this Handy little beginner's guide, which is the same old beginner's guide you've basically been getting. Just with a nice little retexture. They didn't update anything picture wise, really. Except uh, some of the frequently asked things is they, they're talking about tokens, and they actually have the token for this one in here. And I like how the background is actually a nice dark gray and black to go along with this structure deck. It's pretty cool. Talking about how you can link, how to pendulum XYZs, synchros, fusions, rituals. Yeah. I kind of miss the actual rule books we used to get. There's a lot of good stuff in them. And then here's the actual deck, guys. Let's see. So it comes with a dual links promo thing, which I kind of use when I build my proxy decks. Before I go and I commit to buying a deck, I make a cutout proxy version of it to decide what my ratios and stuff are going to be before spending five or six hundred dollars to build a deck. That way I spend only what I need to run it. I did that with Trick Stars and I have quite a good deck because of it. But here we have the actual deck. We have Lilith, Lady of Lament, which is the monster that searches out all your normal trap cards. She's really good. You have Darkest Diablos, Lord of the Lair, which is your big beating boss monster. Anytime you tribute, he hits the field. And you have Armor of the Wicked Warden, 
which I don't have a lot of experience with. So let's see, what do you do? You can discard this card, add layer of darkness. Okay, so you're the field spell searcher. And let's see, uh... You can tribute one dark monster, draw a card, or if this, or if the card tribute is dark monster other than this card, you can add dark monster 2,000 or more defense from your deck to your hand. So it's able to search out Diablos. That's pretty cool. Got Lair of Darkness, the new field spell that allows you to tribute your opponent's cards and makes everything a dark, so that's pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of Vampire World. Or, no, it's Zombie World, I'm thinking of, yeah. And you got the new virus card, Grinning Grave Virus. Uh, you tribute a Dark Monster with 3,000 or less attack. Or, and then your opponent destroys cards of their choice in their hand deck or deck for every 500 points of attack. So if you get rid of a 3k, then they're getting rid of 6 cards. That's pretty cool. You got Duke Shade, the Sinister Shadow Lord. Which is, I think, one of the last of the new cards in the deck. Uh, it's a little 500, 2000, level 4. Uh, you can tribute any number of dark monsters to special summon this card from your hand. If you do, it gains 500 attack for each monster you tributed. So you can tribute 6 of your opponent's things and 6 of yours. You get this in huge attack. And you can tribute someone. Then you can tribute a level 5 hour dark monster in your graveyard. Oh, you target a level 5 hour dark monster in your graveyard. Add it to the hand, so that's pretty good. I uh, got darkest. You got Diablos, King of the Abyss, the original Diablos card. So he's pretty cool. Uh, he can't be special summoned, sadly. He was actually from the Rise of the Dragon Lords structure deck originally. But he's still a pretty cool card. You got Lich Lord, King of the Underworld, which was a gold series card. Not very good, though. Uh, you got Prometheus, King of the Shadows, also a gold series card. Uh, Diablos was also in a gold series later on. But his original release was a structure deck. Uh, with this one, if it's normal somebody can banish dark monsters from your graveyard and it gains attack. Not very good. You got Archfiend Emperor, the first Lord of Horror. There is an ultimate rare version of this that you can get from Judgment of the Light. Uh, I think it's a deluxe edition. Comes with like nine packs, some sleeves, and a nice cool little storage box. Uh, you can normal summon it without tributing, but this attack can be... As attack and defense become halved, so it becomes a 15 1000. But it's really good because uh, you can special, it can't be special summoned by any monsters except fiends. But once per turn, you can banish arch fiends from your grave, then target things and destroy it. So you normally want to run a couple of this. Then there's Caius, the Mega Monarch, great card, I love it. I will be running that at three, most likely. Legendary Maju Garzette, probably going to run that in a couple as well. Vanity's Fiend, a really good reprint that this deck needed. Uh, Caius is a nice reprint as well, but Majesty's Fiend is really good. Here's the other Archfiend that comes with, well, one of the others anyways, uh, Mist Archfiend. Uh, you can normal summon it without tributing, so it can be a 2400 no tribute, which is pretty good. But it dies at the end phase. Oh well. And there's Infernal Dragon. I don't remember where this came from originally. I think it was a promo for something or another. But it's kind of okay. Probably going to take it out. Uh, Archfiend Cavalry. It was destroyed by a card effect into the grave. You can target an Archfiend in your grave. Accept this thing and especially summon it. So that's pretty cool. Stygian Street Patrol. It's good for summoning out your bigger monsters. Phantom of Chaos. This was originally a card that Jaden, according to the show of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Jaden actually created this card. He drew it in a contest. Eh, I'm probably not going to run it. Then there's Plague Wolf. He 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 he. I like him. He's cool. Fiendish Rhino Warrior. This is a card that might actually be new. I'm not sure. I didn't, for quite a while, I wasn't keeping up with everything that was coming out. Yeah, back before we started the channel, I wasn't keeping up on everything, but on a lot of things. Let's see. Fiend monsters, except for Fiendish Rhino Warrior, cannot be destroyed by Battle of Card Effects. That's cool. And if it's into the graveyard, you can send the Fiend monster from your deck to the grave, except itself. So that's pretty good. That sounds like good for Dark World. Uh, Curry Bandit, Tour Guide, Relink Karibo, and Absolute King Backjack. Uh, both Tour Guide and 
Jackback come as ultimate rares, and this even comes as a gold secret, so that's pretty cool. Then on to the spell cards. We have, get back here please, we have Recurring Nightmare, which is a really cool thing, nice reprint for here. Lure of Darkness, another card that I'm really glad was reprinted for the deck. Hand Destruction, it's kind of okay. Foolish Burial Goods, another good reprint. Uh, this is really good for um, Paleo Frogs as well. Send your, sends your Paleos to the graveyard. You got Boogie Trap, this just came out in Code of the Duels, so that's pretty neat. Fires of Doomsday, one of your generic cards. Um, I believe this was originally a rare card, and then it was also a dual terminal, so it's pretty neat to see that again. And then Veil of Darkness, which I really do prefer the super rare version. It just looks so much better as a super rare, but this allows you to, if you draw a dark monster, draw again. Then you got your four virus cards. You got Dark Light, which is interesting. You contribute a dark with 15 or more attack, destroy all monsters that are special summon this turn. Pretty good during your opponent's turn. Tribute one of their things, get rid of all their special summon monsters. Uh, you have Trap of Darkness, which if your life points to 3,000 unless you pay 1,000, you can target a normal trap in your graveyard, and this card's effect becomes that. Mind Crush, which is really better for Dark Worlds, because it forces you to discard. Then there's Rise to Full Height, which is also one of the newer cards. I'm not sure what set it's from. I don't like it that well. And you have Curse of Darkness. Uh, each time a spell is activated, me left resolves, player takes a thousand. Probably gonna come out. Then Sinister, you're a Shuri. I'm not sure where this comes from. It is a newer card though. Uh, each turn, one level five or higher fiend monster you normal summon can be summoned without tributing, so that's cool. It makes it easier to summon your stuff. And if exactly one normal summoner set, Level 5 or higher fiend monster and no other cards will be destroyed. You can send this card from the graveyard instead. And then, of course, you have your Torment token, which is really cool. I love tokens. I like how the tokens are actually centered more towards what the um, card that summoning them is good for. But it can still be used for any token. I just like how they have the attack and defense printed on it and all that stuff. So that's the deck. So I'll see you guys in a little bit when I come up with the three copy version of this deck okay guys and we're back with the deck list so this is made with just stuff from layer of darkness so there's definitely a lot of room for improvement um i didn't do any little research or ideas or anything so this is just straight out of the box what anyone would probably be able to come up with for this deck it is fairly large over 50 I think it's 54 cards, but that is due to no playtesting. Once playtesting occurs, I'll get back to you guys, and we'll probably have an even more slimmed down version of this deck. So, first off, we have, for monsters, three Lilith, Lady of Lament, three Darkest Diablos, three Aherma, two regular Diablos. Um, I'm a big fan of dragons, so I figured that... Diablos himself would be pretty cool to be in there. Plus, it allows you to look at your opponent's draw before they get it. So, let's say they have an Ash Blossom next, and you know you're going to be doing some searching next turn. Or some drawing next turn. That's a great card to get rid of. Plus, you don't want them to have hand traps anyways. So, you could force them into some really bad play. Then I have three Caius the Shadow Monarch. I love Caius. <laughs> I love Monarchs. Um, Yes, totally. Plus, it's pretty decent. It inflicts damage. Blows things up. Um, then there's Legendary Maju Garzette. It might probably come out of here. Due to have to get rid of everything on the field. But it's pretty interesting. Uh, two Vanities Fiend. I couldn't justify throwing in a third one because it's a tribute monster. But two is fairly decent. Um, Two Mistarch Fiends. It's basically a normal summon 24. Even though it is a level 5, it can be normal summoned. It just blows itself up. You got Duke Shade, the Sinister Shadow Lord. Uh, gets really big, really fast. I am running two of this as well. Then we have three Infernal Dragon. Due to Lair of Darkness, um, you tribute your opponent's monster to put it back on the field. It's a giant twenty. It's a giant twenty, so it's a huge beat stick. And I got two Absolute King Backjack. Um, 
I decided against running the third one, and I'm almost thinking about taking out a second one just to slim the deck down. It does set itself up, which is really cool. So let's say you get rid of it for some reason during your turn and send it to the graveyard. You can rearrange top cards of your deck. Then on your opponent's turn, you can get rid of it from your graveyard. And oh, look, normal trap card. And I got three Relink Karibo because it's a draw card as well as you can banish it to keep something from being destroyed by battle. Which is pretty neat. For spell cards, we have, of course, three Lair of Darkness. You can't not have Lair of Darkness. Three Lair of Darkness, because you gotta dig through your deck. Two Recurring Nightmare. I couldn't justify a third one, even though there is quite a few monsters with zero defense in there. A lot of them I'd rather have used once. Although Lilith is one I'd like to get back. Uh, one hand destruction just to dig through your deck a little more and disrupt your opponent's plays. Plus, it's able to put things like Backjack and Relink Karibo in the graveyard. So, that's always a plus. Uh, two Fires of Doomsday gives you free tokens. And tokens are always cool. And I don't have the tokens with me, but I actually have the specific tokens. It's supposed to be a summons with Fires of Doomsday, so that's really cool. They came out of a tin a long time ago. But it's really nice to have the tokens for those as well. Then I have, for traps, three dark light. Basically, you get rid of any dark 15 or more. Destroy all monsters that were special summon this turn. Uh, basically, layer of darkness, your opponent's turn. Enter battle phase. Their opponent enters the battle phase. They've cleared your entire field of monsters. They're trying to OTK you. You flip the dark light. And what do you know? You just cleared their entire field. And then I have two of each of the virus, two deck devastation, two eradicator, two crush card, two full force, and three grinning grave. Um, that's a stand for me. This is what I feel would be a good standard virus engine. Two of each of the little ones, and then three of the super, just cause. Uh, it is a little bit harder to get off some of them, like eradicator. Due to needing uh, something over 20, needing something 2,500 or more. And Grinning Grave works really well with Darkest Diablos. But, anyways, that is the deck profile. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Once we, again, once we do some playtesting, there will be a new deck profile of this that will be showing off edits and updates, because, again, this is like a 54 card deck right now. And, of course, our. Three happy little torment tokens. <laughs> but um, again, once we get that done, we'll show you another deck profile. And then from there, we'll get into making a new deck. I plan on doing a few different ideas, possibly combining this with heretics or heretics, whichever you prefer pronunciation of. Um, trying to get a hold of some infernoid stuff. I wasn't really interested in infernoids when they came out. So I don't have a lot of them. But I am interested in possibly tossing them into another deck as well. So I am going to try to pick up an Infernoid core. See what I can do with that. Also, um, I do want to say we are using some really amazing brown Promate sleeves. These are really nice. Um, they're actually Yu-Gi-Oh! size as well. And I got all the stuff that you see in this video here, including my background Elemental Hero mat. From Taz's Gaming, uh, I got the mat a long time ago. He no longer has any copies of it. But he does have copies of this structure deck. And sleeves. Multiple different colors up there, guys. I mean, Promate is just amazing. They, they are in, they're a great finish. They don't break very easily. And they're Ultra Pro, so... Eh, what do you know? Good stuff there. Ultra Pro is actually the best one if you want to get good sleeves. But he has tons of different sleeve colors. He actually has a couple of different varieties. I do suggest getting the Pro Mates, though. They come in both Magic size, which you can use for over sleeves. And they come in Yu-Gi-Oh! size. So that's really cool. Tons of different colors. Blues, greens, reds, yellows, browns, pink, purple. Just an amazing array of colors for you guys. So as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. This is the Danger Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. I'm Danger. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We do daily uploads, and this is the Danger Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, signing off.